I'm Monica Novotny at the Politics Desk. We have live coverage for you now from Capitol Hill. We are waiting for Republicans to come out and release the details of their alternative budget plan. Its main component, what the GOP is calling a highly simplified tax code. Stay with MSNBC for live coverage of this news conference as soon as it happens. As we wait, let's bring in MSNBC congressional correspondent Mike Vaccara. So, Mike, how is this budget different from the president's in, in, in the broadest strokes? Well, first of all, it's going to freeze discretionary spending for five years. That's what Republicans hope to do with this budget they put forward today. Uh, I got to tell you, Monica, Republicans are, are not under the burden of having to, to put forward a budget that is actually going to pass Congress, and I think they understand that. That's not to say that a, a lot of their beliefs, uh, their ideology, and their principles are not encapsulated in this budget that will be put forward by Paul Ryan. Uh, the young ranking member of the House Budget Committee. He's from Wisconsin. He'll be appearing before cameras in just a moment, this much anticipated Republican budget. Remember last week when it was Republican leader John Boehner who appeared before cameras with the House leadership, held up a, a pamphlet and said, this is our budget. Uh, but it turned out that that budget did not have what you, what you would tr traditionally associate with a, a budget in terms of numbers, deficit projections, spending projections and the like. This is the real nitty gritty. This is the real deal now and not after some dissonance within the Republican Party and the political side of this of course uh, goes on and on. Democrats emailing like crazy trying to point out what they see as schisms between Republicans, Paul Ryan and the leadership and how they want to go about this. And here is the young man Paul Ryan now, uh, the, Dem uh, the Republican from Wisconsin. But the question is, is he fixing it or is he making it worse? We believe that the president's budget, which comes to the floor of the House of Representatives today, makes our fiscal crisis much, much worse. Rather than getting spending under control, it sends spending out of control. Rather than keeping taxes low to create jobs, it chases ever higher spending with ever higher taxes and results in ever higher debt. Not just a modest increase in our national debt, but an unprecedented, unsustainable increase in red ink. The president's budget is little more than a thinly veiled attempt by Washington to spend its way into prosperity, tax its way into tax release, and borrow its way into debt reduction. This simply cannot work. But, I, but as I have always said, and you've heard me say this all throughout this debate, it is not enough for us to just criticize, we must also propose a better way forward. And that's exactly what we've done in the past, and that's exactly what we're here to do today, because we are here offering up our Republican budget alternative. This is our budget with real policies and real numbers. It gives Americans a real choice for a better pathway forward. I'm going to walk through its components now. Discretionary spending. Our government is already spending way beyond its means. We reject the failed notion that we can spend our way out of every problem. We can't. And we need to get back to setting priorities. So number one, we propose to rescind the Democrats' stimulus package starting in the year 2010 except for unemployment insurance for those who've already lost their jobs. Most of the money in the stimulus package doesn't even spend out until 2011. Number two, we repeal the extra spending in the omnibus, and we go back to the levels of the continuing resolution with the exception of our nation's primary discretionary responsibilities, defense and veteran spending. Our budget then proposes to freeze non-defense, non-veteran spending for five years, followed by a modest annual increase for the second five years. Notice I said second five years. We are offering a 10-year budget, unlike the Democrats, who hide their explosive spending by not offering a full 10-year budget. Mandatory spending. We have to start tackling our entitlement crisis. And our budget takes a first step toward that critical reform. And let me walk you through those critical steps. Medicaid. We propose to give states and governors the freedom to tailor their Medicaid programs to meet their unique needs. So we propose to convert Medicaid into an allotment adjusting for growth in low-income populations and for inflation. We have so many governors with so many innovative ideas to fix this problem. Let's give them the opportunity to do that. Medicare. We propose to actually save Medicare. Medicare is one of our, it's our largest and one of the most important programs in the federal government. So first, for those people who are in or near retirement, meaning people who are 55 years or older, your Medicare benefit's not going to change, with one exception. We agree with and adopt the president's proposal to means test the Part D benefit. For people who are 54 or younger, in other words, starting with those who turn 65 in the year 2021, the Medicare program is reformed to work like the program that we as members of Congress and federal employees now enjoy. This premium support program provides future recipients with 100% of the average Medicare payment. 
We also propose to implement some of MedPAC's rec recommendations on non-beneficiary spending. Social Security. On Social Security, we propose no change in benefits for those in or near retirement. Again, people over the age of 55. But this program is scheduled to go bankrupt in 2041, according to its trustees. And it will require a 22% across-the-board cut in benefits. That's the current law schedule. In an effort to avoid this catastrophe, we seek to reach across the aisle. And we draw upon a Social Security reform previously put forward by the President's OMB director. We would trigger the ORZAG spending reforms, modest adjustments for high-income beneficiaries, five years before Social Security goes bankrupt. This would help reduce the devastating effects of these benefit cuts that are scheduled to occur. Now, while this is an admittedly modest first step, we think it's in very important and critical to begin this discussion for moving forward with real reform. Budget enforcement. We propose an earmark moratorium for the rest of this Congress so we can finally bro fix this broken system. We also propose statutory spending caps, real statutory spending caps with real budget enforcement to lock in these budgetary savings. We use the reconciliation process to actually reduce spending in debt, not to grow government, instructing the 11 committees to slow growth in mandatory spending. Let me turn to tax policy. First, our budget avoids the huge tax increase scheduled at the end of 2010 by making the 2001 and 2003 tax relief permanent. Second, it permanently extends the alternative minimum ta patch tax. Next, our budget reforms the broken tax code by making it simpler, more pro-growth, and more competitive. For individuals, we offer taxpayers a choice. You can have the current code with all of its bells and loopholes and deductions if you want to, or you can switch over to a choice-based system, a simple system, a system with two rates, 10% on the first $100,000 for couples or $50,000 for individuals, 25% above that. Generous personal and standard exemptions, $25,000 exemption for families, $12,500 exemption for individuals, $3,500 personal exemption. What that means basically is a family of four with $39,000 in income pays no tax on that income. And you can file your taxes on a postcard if you want to. It's tax reform elected by each individual taxpayer to help create jobs and help families in this difficult time. <clears throat> now, we also think we need to get private capital off of the sidelines and back into the marketplace. We need to get jobs in this economy. And so to get this economy growing, we propose a number of reforms. Number one, cut the corporate tax rate. Currently, it's the second highest in the industrialized world to the average industrialized nation rate, 25%. You see, when we tax our employers and our jobs more than our competitors tax theirs, we lose jobs. Whether we like it or not, we are in a highly competitive 21st century global economy, and we will either lead or follow. I say we lead. I say we have to help our businesses, big and small, compete and thrive in the global economy. We also propose to suspend the capital gains tax through the year 2010. We need to spur investment, not punish it. I can't tell you how many seniors, how many people in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s who have told me how they've lost so much of their savings. The president is proposing to increase the tax on those savings, the tax on the assets that make up those savings, by 33%. We want to help people regain the savings in their 401ks, in their pension funds, in their kids' college savings plans. Energy policy. We reject the president's cap-and-trade scheme, and we suggest opening our federal areas for drilling and invest the revenue into three parts, a clean energy trust fund, deficit reduction, and the highway trust fund. Now let me walk you through the results of this budget. It results in lower spending, lower deficits, lower taxes, lower debt, and more jobs. Let me show you spending. We have lower, we have lower deficits in each actual year than the president's deficit, resulting in a deficit that is half of the president's in the 10th year. And we bring government spending back down toward its historical level of 20.7% of GDP. Let's look at debt. <clears throat> Our budget produces $3.6 trillion less in debt, and it puts America on a, ta on a pathway to controlling our debt versus the president's plan to getting our debt out of control. It is very important to understand we are going into an ocean of red ink in this country. 
We that is Congressman Paul Ryan offering up the GOP's budget alternative, a 10-year budget plan hitting on uh, big three topics there, there discretionary a spending, entitlements, and taxes. We're going to get instant analysis on the other side of the break from uh, our congressional correspondent, Mike Vaccara. He is on Capitol Hill listening to all this. We'll have the details on the other side of this break. We'll be right back.